Your locker's over there. The one with my name on it, right? <laughs> Quick study. We put the starter's name on the whiteboard over here before every game. Coach likes to keep things regular, but obviously injuries happen. People perform or they don't, so it'll change from time to time. All right, well, hopefully it changes sooner rather than later. If you're doing the right things, you'll be there sooner than you think. Hey, that's the plan. Hey, come on, let me show you my office. Come on in. What is going on, lads? Welcome back to episode two of our NBA 2K My Career Playthrough. Uh, it's been a while, so apologies for not uploading this for the guys that did enjoy it. We are going to do a couple of more episodes of this because I am really enjoying the game. There is there is a couple of issues with it. I think that it is very, very microtransaction heavy this year. I, I think even compared to last year, it seems like I'm going to have to grind a lot to you know, become a 99 overall player or to be like one of the best players in the game in this. Uh, I'm still kind of struggling with the shooting, but towards the end of this episode, I was just draining trees. And I think I'm gonna go kind of as a three point shooter now and kind of excel in that. Usually I'm kind of like a slasher like this, kind of going into the rim and getting finishes and stuff. Uh, but I think it's gonna take a while to actually boost up my stats enough to be able to dominate in the paint, especially that I am, you know, a guard. Um, my free throw rating, my free throws in general are absolutely shocking. But yeah, I mean, gameplay-wise, I am really enjoying it. Uh, it's really fun. I think the story of it, and you'll see a couple of cutscenes in here, we're just showing a couple of highlights from the first game of the season, opening night against the Golden State Warriors, who we do actually win against in the end. But yeah, it was a tough challenge. I am playing on the, I think, the default... Um, I think, it, as far as I know, it's the default difficulty. Uh, but I think once you kind of... The thing I like about this man, right, is the skill gap is controlled by... You know, if you learn the mechanics and you learn what works in the game and you actually apply it and you get your, you know, your shot meters like here, like absolutely perfect green. If you're shooting green shots and you're able to get a green uh, release, as you see there, when you do get a, per a perfect release, you do get a green over the player's head and it comes up as an excellent release. And it's like, it's a guaranteed bucket. Like you're always going to score. Um, and I think that kind of adds a skill gap to what is otherwise, you know, it can be a frustrating game. Uh, especially if you are kind of looking to, to dominate. I mean, we all want to be good at games that we play and we spend time to play, but we'll see there where I get the little green over my player's head. That means that it's 100% of a chance of going in unless it gets blocked. Like, that's the only way it, can, it, 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 it won't go in. Um, but we do pick up the W there. I get 14 points, 38% shooting from the field, and... Uh, six assists as well to go along with that i mean i am a point guard so i do need to be getting the assists in uh but i am kind of like a score first point guard so we're going to let you listen to this little interview here action is there a specific part of your game you, you know you need to work on I got an answer for you. It's really important for me to be the kind of teammate that, you know, really brings out the best in everyone I'm on the floor with. So even though I think I did an okay job there, in the long term, you know, I, I want to get way more in sync with everyone. You know, but that'll come. It just takes some more rest. MP, come on in. Take There's a seat. another one What's here. MP, Coach Graves, <laughs> Mr. Ock Pim. What did I tell you about that? Well, Bella, please. This guy's been a dick, guy. man. So. About Shep. Well, you too. Now just listen. We knew the PR hit we'd take for picking you over him. But that's all just outside noise. Inside these walls, all we care about is ball. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to put in the work. On and off the court. So whatever it takes. I actually spoke to Freddie Novak. Talk uh, to Freddie. Did I do something wrong by talking to Freddie? Freddie's a nice guy. I like him. But all this stuff about controlling your own narrative. You're a ball player, not a politician. We put together a very specific game plan for you. You hit these goals, you're in the starting lineup. Simple as that. All right, so we're into another game, and I think that's probably one of my biggest criticisms so far of this is, especially as playing it and recording it and stuff, like, there's literally so many cutscenes and so much stuff in it that's happening that, like, 
it's just I just want to play games, man. I want to level up my player to be like maybe 90 overall, and then I can start kind of like going into the city and actually, you know, not letting my teammates down if I do play some 3v3 or I play some uh, rec or pro am. Like, and I just feel like that there's so much like heavy-handed cutscenes in it that they're trying to obviously have this career, like this story mode in it where, um, you know, you're obviously you've got a rival. We saw in the first episode, Shep Bones, a beautiful shot, using LeBron as a as a riot shield, like in COD, like staying behind him, shooting my shots. But um, I'm just absolutely drilling shots in this episode here. And as you see, we do get a, a bit of a pace in off the Clippers, but I am absolutely dominating now, and I'm starting to kind of feel out, feel my way around the game. I probably need to uh, continue to boost up my player, but yeah, I mean, he is a good build in fairness. He's a really solid build. He can do it all, shooting, passing, finishing at the rim, defending. I still need to upgrade, but uh, that will come with time. But yeah, the cutscenes, man, that's probably the biggest complaint I have at the moment and the fact that it takes so long to upgrade your player. But we do actually lose that game. Uh, I did play well in that game. It was probably one of my best games. 25 points, 5 assists, and it was 85% from the field, which I had an A-plus teammate rating. We still lost, but we do actually unlock a couple of badges, which is quite decent as well. Um, but I think we have another cutscene here, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we do. Watch so it. I'll let you guys watch this. I might just skip a lot of these, to be honest. <laughs> hey, this guy Shep what's is at MP it again? For anyway. dick. Sounds like a phone to me. <laughs> I got that MP29, that, that Nokia joint. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I think it stands for mostly pathetic. No, 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 no. no. Major pose. <laughs> Mr. <Missed the> point. <laughs> Musty pillow. Oh! <laughs> Yo, why is that so funny, though? I think it's because she's an agent. Usually they're not funny. They're just suits. But this agent, she's very funny. Oh, yeah. They're supposed to be friends with everybody. You know what I mean? That's kind of their deal. Right. That right? is my deal. I'm either your friend or your worst enemy and Ooh. nothing in between. Oh. You still salty Ricky Bennett didn't join your agency, Barbara? Oh, come on now. I was just trying to help a brother out. It's not my fault that he doesn't understand the rules of the mm. game. Oh, Shep, you know, I got a serious question for you. Um, what? Why can't you be more of a leader <laughs> like MP? <laughs> why are you going to be so gosh darn selfish all the time, <laughs> P? Man, anyone looking up to that bum now? Good luck leading a team when you buried on the bench. Ooh, <laughs> yes, dude. But you know who I really feel sorry for? Like, Ooh. honestly, his girl. Oh, <laughs> all these NBA right? players. Mm. She stuck with that clown? I mean, realistically, man, he probably got a whole closet full of cardigans and pleated khakis. <laughs> <laughs> She'll figure it out. Mm. Speaking of, yo, Mila, your boy single. Hit me up if you ever want to see what it's like to be with a real man. Oh, what oh, a dick. That's real classy. Why would he even mention me? Is he Shep? Does he need a reason? Yeah, no, he does not. Clown. Look, this means nothing. It's just some loud mouth being a loud mouth. But you do have that Top Takes Daily interview tomorrow, and they're absolutely going to want to ask about this, given yeah, how inflammatory it was. Like I said, it's just, it's, it's no big deal. It is no big <sighs> deal, but we are going to obviously need to strategize your response, okay? So... All right, so we're into our last game of this episode because there's a big cutscene at the end as well, as far as I know. And to be honest, lads, look, the presentation, the actual story mode, you know, the fact that I have a rival, the fact that I have to keep the fans happy, try to win the fans over after being drafted when they didn't really want me. Like, I do like the I do like the setup of it, and the presentation is absolutely incredible. Would I like something like this for eFootball in Master League? You're damn right, I would. It would be insane. You know, it would absolutely be insane. But I think the biggest problem is with it for me is that if I, I've often sat down, like I've sat down to record episodes of this, and you literally might record one hour where like 30 minutes of it are like, well, maybe even 40 minutes are literally like just cutscenes, traveling to the cutscenes, you know, doing fetch quests, stuff like that. And that's a beautiful shot there. Like, I just want to play a couple of games, you know what I mean? Like, whereas if I'm playing something like Call of Duty or I'm playing something like Pez or eFootball, like Pez 21 or LC Football 23, I can just go in and play like five, six matches and there's no messing. I know what they're trying to do with the story mode and I do, you know, think that it's cool. I missed the wrong pass there, but uh, I'll, I'll get better at that system because we do want to score from the arc, behind the arc. Um, but yeah, that is it for that. So we're going to end this up with another cutscene. Uh, feel free to skip through this, guys, because it's about seven minutes, but I'm just leaving it in for story mode purposes. We'll be back with episode three quite soon. I hope you're enjoying the series. Let me know in the comments below. Having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Now, I know this might be a sensitive subject, but I just want to get right into it. We all saw what happened on draft night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we haven't heard your side of the story. So I'm wondering, how does it feel to be on the receiving end of, of a mixed 
reaction like that on, on what should be the most enjoyable night of your life? That just comes with the territory, you know? Like, we make a lot of money, and it's all because of those passionate fans out there. Night in and night out, coming into the games and showing their support. It's because of them, you know what I'm saying? And yes, the fans are free to express their feelings however way they want, but it don't matter to me. Uh, I'm, I mean, are we serious right now? Listen, <laughs> MP, <laughs> with all due respect, do you expect us to believe that? If I'm my own so-called fans uh -huh. were booing me, that wouldn't sit right with me at all. Yo, Kendrick, my man, it, it, it doesn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know in the long run, people will come around and, uh, you know, see what I'm all about. You know, and that's just giving everything that I got to this game. You know, um, not only to the team, but to this, this, this city, man. You know, it's, it's my job. Proving my worth to these fans is my job. You know, so I know right now they may be booing, but... Soon enough, they're going to be cheering for me. MP, let's stay with the draft for a moment. Mm -hmm. A big part of the reaction to your selection was the fact that Shep Owens, your biggest rival, was still on the draft board. That's right. But a, a lot of people think he has the higher upside due to his athleticism and the fact that he has loads of untapped potential as a relative newcomer to this game, whereas you've been trying to work on your skill set for the last decade plus. How would you respond to people who think you've got the higher floor, but the lower ceiling. Mm. I mean, look, Shep would be a great track and field player. Oh, I mean, wow. all you got to do is run fast, jump high, and you get a medal. You feel me what I'm saying? Okay. I mean, but if you want to be the best hoop in the world, you got to shoot, you got to defend, you got to, you know, you got to think at a high level, and Shep does not do that. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> it's the truth. Perk, you know I've been in MP's corner the whole time. Some would. You don't think, come on now. Come on, man. You don't think Shep can learn those things? JJ, man, you know, honestly, I, I really don't. I really don't, man. I, me, I've been working on my craft for years, for decades at that. You know, and my results speak for themselves in both wins and losses. I mean, what has Shep done so far? Other than filming his little reality TV show and going around shopping for chains, he ain't done nothing. It's a good show. <laughs> Sit, <laughs> come on, man. Um, it's more entertaining than his game. Yeah. It, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, you know, me, I'm a student in the game. I've watched plenty of tape on this guy, and he just doesn't think on a high level. And he doesn't make game-winning plays. Simply put, simply put. Not like I do, at least. You know, you can dunk from the free throw line. You can win the dunk trophy, whatever, whatever. But those guys winning that dunk trophy aren't the same guys winning Larry O'Brien at the end of the season. And that's just facts. Mm. MP, you know we keep it real on here. I got to ask you, man to man, how do you respond to Chef Owens calling you out on his reality show? Oh, wow. This dude took shots at you. He took shots at your family. He even took shots at your girl. What do you say to something like that? You know, I, I'm going to say this as calmly as possible. Because at the end of the day, it's disappointing to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to me, basketball is a place where you express joy. Yeah, I want to beat my opponent, my opponent. Don't get me wrong. So in the heat of the moment, words do get exchanged. But to talk about another man's, another man's family? Like, fam, I'm embarrassed for him. My man has a lot of growing up to do. Well, what I want to know and we want to know... The next time you two meet, are mm -hmm. you going to exchange words? Are y'all going to exchange words? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But I'm sure there's going to be a discussion that I can promise you. You know, I'm not expecting him to change his stripes. You know, he is who he is. You know, so when someone shows you who they are, you believe them. Mm. That's it. You know, that's what my parents told me, and that's just how I live. Well, this has been unforgettable, and I'd love to continue this conversation, but unfortunately, we are out of time. MP, thank you for joining wait, us. Wait, so that's it's it? It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, yeah, and we got to wrap things up, but you have been a tremendous sport, and we really appreciate you answering the tough questions. We wish you all the best, you and your family and your girl. Uh, coming up next, we talk early season God, contenders jokes, and pretenders, but first, this commercial break. 